Ah, baby, let's get it on. Mm. Let's love, honey. Mm. Let's get it on. Sugar, let's get it on. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What y'all know about that, Marvin Gaye? So this is your man, Rico, the opinionist. Yeah, I know I'm shocking you. I'm, this, I'm doing this little midday opinions just for you. What's good, what's good, what's good? Dwayne, get in here, bro. Get in here, man. Uh, I'm Rico, the opinionist. Rico, the opinionist on my YouTube channel. Uh, when you go there, you know, like, share, and subscribe. And, you know, here on my Facebook page, you know, share, share, share. And then y'all can discuss later. Um, and on in my on my YouTube channel, and I'm also on Instagram and all of that. But on my YouTube channel, there's a description box where you can fool with me on the Cash App and the PayPal, as well as on this live that you're on right now. I have a, a PayPal and a Cash App. So fool with me if you cool with me. You hear me? All right, so I'm gonna give give people a few seconds to come on in, and I'll just uh, then I'll start with my thoughts. I only have three thoughts. I'm not gonna drag them out. I'm not gonna just ramble all over them. But y'all know how I work. If you've ever been on any one of my lives, you know how I just I tend to just go there and I add and some things that may pop into my head. I'll just table it for a second and deal with that. Then I'll come back to my original topic. Yes, I do veer off. But I do uh, get back on track. So uh, today, um, I am beginning the practice of whatever something's on my mind. Go ahead and just say it to you right then and there. Boom. And so uh, here's the deal. We have three, I guess, three hot topics that's going on right now in news. You have that Megan, Megan and Harry Oprah Winfrey interview. Uh, I'm just giving my thoughts on, I've, I've read what a lot of people have to say, but I go through social media, I look at MSNBC, I look at, you know, the news is on, on my, on the internet, now to try to get a feel of what people are saying, and then I said, okay, let me, let me share my thoughts, let me contribute my thoughts to this whole thing, and then also, comedian actress Leslie Jones, y'all know who that is, right, um, she was on Wendy Williams recently, and she said, you no, know, she said it, uh, that her dating life wasn't that great because Wendy asked her how her dating life went and is going, and she said, "You you do better asking the corns on my feet. Uh, I think they're doing better than my love life." And then she goes on to say that, "No, these men don't know what they want. These men are so broken." All right, and the third one is because um, I know a lot of you have seen the movie. I have not seen the movie coming to America, but. Uh, but I've had conversations with a few people who have all said pretty much the same thing. They mentioned the rape scene, the drugging and rape scene, what appears to be a drugging and rape scene in that movie. And also has something to do with Leslie Jones. All right, so let me go ahead and get started. My first one is the Megan and Harry. I'm going to start slowly. I hope you got a minute. Uh, I'm going to make this statement, then I'm going to fill, give in a filler. I couldn't care less about this damn Megan and Harry thing. But then I'm going to give you some information. You ready for this? See, there's so many things that are, for me, for me personally, is going on is way more important than rich people's issues. Uh, <laughs> Megan is playing this victim. Of some kind of racism and all of this, and and she was telling Oprah about how someone in the royal family or someone who works for them were having a conversation with her about how dark her baby's gonna get. Now we know damn well Megan Megan is damn near a ghost. Harry is a ghost because she's biracial, one of those high yellow biracials, and he's just a pure Nordic. White Anglo-Saxon product Caucasian. So that baby's not going to have that much damn color. But one thing about it, I've always said this. I appreciate white people for understanding what white is. I just wish black people knew what, what, what black is. See, white people know if there's anything other than Slavic, Nordic, or wasp in your body, you are not Caucasian. You are not white. You are other. But the word that they, try, they like to throw around is, obviously, you're black. And when you call biracial people black, that has a history. 
The reason they were called black because out of hatred and white people understanding that they know what white is. They know white takes a white mother and a, and a black, and I'm sorry, a white mother and a white father to make a white child. Asians understand, go in China, they're very homogenous, meaning everybody looks alike in China. They have everybody high, I mean, yellow Asians, and they have a few browns and a few others, but they talk, they treat them like crap. But it's about black people. We get we when we see original how we look in our original form. When we see Africans who come over from Africa, that's our original form. You know the ones that so blue black, and they have a lot of millions of them over on the continent of Africa. But we're so fucked up. We we look at that look look at them as if they're the imperfect ones when we're actually the imperfect ones. We have a whole lot of plantation slave owner, slave owners blood growing through our body. That's why I should be darker than what I am. And some people are like, damn, you too dark. Imagine what our Africans look like right now. Imagine what they look like before they met the European, before they were kidnapped for a section of them were kidnapped and brought over and raped and brutalized. And created all these different hues of what we call black. And what I appreciate about white people is that they're very consistent in being white. I wish black people were consistent in being black. Also mentally. See, white people are consistent in being white up here. You're conservative white, you're Republican white, you're liberal white, you're Democratic white. They all have this one thing in common. They know they're all white and they all benefit from being white. But at black people, we don't seem to understand. And I often question myself, was I the only one who stayed awake in eighth grade biology? Was I the only one who didn't skip class in the eighth and ninth grade biology classes? Because sometimes I think a lot of us black people skip that class because we don't seem to know shit about genetics or biology. And I, and I said it and it made it really plain. We want a Mexican baby, you have a Mexican mother and a Mexican father. We want a white baby, white mother, white father. Uh, baby from India, Indian mama, Indian father. Then we come to black people. We know my grandma, she had some German on her, on her auntie's side. And my, and my granddad, you know, I think he, his people from, uh, from Russia. And so, you stupid ass. You looking like. The daughter of Boris, I'm sorry, the daughter of, of Whoopi Goldberg. No, well, shit, no. Well, I'm saying you could look like a daughter if Whoopi Goldberg actually had a baby by a black man. But if you can't look like the daughter of Whoopi Goldberg, then you'll look like Mariah Carey. And so, so anyway, well, you look like your, your, your mother could have been Cicely Tyson. And you're out here talking about with your French and whatever you got in your blood. Get out of here, Don Cheadle, look alike. Lupita and Yongo look alike. Tomorrow you mix. Get the fuck out of here. So, but we don't seem to understand what black is. And it's the weirdest thing. So, this Megan thing, I have no sympathy for her. Because, you know, and I, and I blame black women for this. Black women really don't know what black is, they call everybody biracial black. And black America doesn't know what black is. They called a president for eight years who with a, a whole grown, full white mama and called the main black. I said something wrong with the American Negro. I know what it is. It's 1555 to 1865. Brutal cattle slavery. That They didn't just beat us physically, our ancestors who were part of the uh, ancestors brought over, but they brutalized us psychologically. We don't even know what black is. And this shit is crazy. You got Negroes with master degrees, law degrees, PhDs, who own $100,000 plus businesses, live in $250,000 homes, and still don't know what black is. I know economics know what considered successful and educated. Educated, so-called educated blacks don't even know what black is. But one thing I love about that Caucasian, they sure let your ass know when you're not white. And so the royals, if you understand the history of the royals, those are the biggest land baron, robber barons, thieving, plantation uh, promoting, slavery sanctioning motherfuckers they ever lived. Where y'all think the queen and all them got to get their money from? Land and other resources that were pilfered from other people, mainly people with color. 
So those real white folks called the Royals told this mulatto, <laughs> you finna have you a little niggling, are you? That's what it was, what they said. <laughs> and her feelings are hurt. Get out of here, Megan. Because Megan never identified as being black. But black women always, yeah, she black. We, they they going to have some black children running in a, in a rug palace. You should have heard all these Negro talk shows from, from uh, Ricky, Ricky Smiley to the, to the, uh, to the, Dear Hughley's, all these radio talk shows, all these shows, and all these black women that work on these shows and blogs, they gonna have some black kids running through the royal palace. Yeah, right. Y'all don't know the power of white people, do you? White people don't play. And that's a particular, that's a monarch, that's a, that's a, uh, 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 old school Caucasian setup called the royal family. They understand what white is? We don't. They weren't gonna let no biracial kids run through there, cause certainly there weren't gonna be no blacks. No black children. How y'all think this man here is Nordic Caucasian and this woman here is damn near 70% Caucasian? How you think they're going to have some brown babies? Are y'all that fucking desperate for attention? I'm telling you, I'm embarrassed by the mindset of black women in America daily. They say they're the most educated, but I can't, I can't tell. They, they, they cheer on the silliest shit. And uh, Sherry Shepard... <laughs> You know, speaking of desperate black women who worship biracial and white men who want a white zaddy so badly. we I read a tweet she put out. Um, all women should be looking, should be lucky to find a husband like Harry, Prince Harry. Because he saw some things was going on in that palace and he took his woman away and took her away from that. We should all be so say, shut up Sherry Shepard and find a man, help her. Find one that likes you, but Sherry Shepard, and I don't think you're a mean lady. I just think you're just a kiss ass. Hey, Sh uh, Charmaine, what's up, Sharonda uh, Mormon? I just think you're just such a kiss ass, Sherry. And personally, I don't think you should be on Dish Nation. It's just, it's all about posture for me, you know. Uh, but the thing is, it take these Negro bedwinters come out putting these damn tweets out, just worshiping that white man, and it's funny. Because I know I'm not the only one who knows how to read. But apparently I'm one of the few who pays attention when stuff pops up in the news. And I have the memory of an elephant. Isn't, isn't this the same Harry who wore the swastika? Cost, wore a swastika Hitler costume for Halloween not too long ago before he met Meghan Markle? Isn't that the same one who used to throw out nigger racial slurs when he went on his little safaris when he was wilding out? Anyone every time you see him, he had killed a rhinoceros or something, standing over with his gun in Africa? That same, so all of a sudden he's a, a white knight, Sherry Shepard? A knight in shining armor? He went from a prince to being her knight in shining armor. What's with this fantasy shit, Sherry Shepard and others, and other black women who think like her? It's the weirdest shit to witness. Sisters want this gullible and this bed wenchy in the 80s and 90s. No, there was some, some neo-soul. There was some African-centered consciousness going on. But sisters have become so bed wenchy and so in lust with a white man. And you have, you can have that choice. It's like, you can't compare it to white men, because one thing white, I'm sorry, you can't compare it to black men, because I know you say, well, look at these black dudes, they're right here fucking all these white girls. One thing about black men, for the most part, black men don't throw themselves at other races of women. Other races of women be checking for black men. Do you hear me? Black women, it is, it is embarrassing. They throw themselves at a group of men who don't want them. You keep worshiping and wishing that you get one of those white men. It's just like high value black men. High value black men don't like, uh, lady, you're, uh, average at best, my Kevin Samuels. So you think a high power white man is one of black chick? Y'all, y'all are delusional. And I just say he's all that, but he's a high, he's a prince. But there's something wrong with him though. So you now you pick your biracial chick who's about six years older than you and a divorcee? 
damn, you should have my well should have got you a Keisha out of the project. That's what you ended up with. You go and he got to be out of his mind. You gonna give up your job and your money? Food with this bra, but that's his. I guess he's the Russell Wilson of the Royals. Damn, I went there, didn't I? Hmm. You know, so fuck Prince Harry and the hair with Meghan Markle. Let me let me say this also. Because I see, I continue to read. I continue to read further. You know, see, I don't care who you date, but if it's done publicly, we all have a right, and we can say whatever we want to say. We can add opinions and thoughts about it. So don't say, well, Rico, you sure worried about it? No, I'm not. It's it's in the news, so I'm gonna talk about it. Duh. But if I don't know your business, I can't say nothing about it. And that sound about right? Hey, Leo. And so here's the deal with this damn Meghan Markle. And anybody who's black who dates or or reproduces or marries interracially, especially white folks, you start to marry somebody white or Asian. I'm going to get close to the camera so you can hear me. I'm, and I'll spread this word because we all know somebody who's married to somebody white or dating Asian and all that. Let me tell you something. Shut the fuck up about racism. I don't want to hear your goddamn mouth about racism. You made your choice. You jumped over the fence. Now keep your monkey ass over there. Damn, I shouldn't have said that part though. But yeah, but keep your ass over there. How you going? I'm going to tell you something. And then I saw something, a meme. Maybe it was a meme or a tweet where Serena Williams said, Girl, I understand what you're talking about. First of all, Serena Williams. I'm going to break them all down. Because all of them are hypocrites and dumbasses. Serena Williams. She went all over the world, all over these European countries, playing tennis and whooping those white girls' ass, right? Her and her sister. They called her monkey. They called her gorilla. They made fun of her booty. They made fun of her skin tone. These are white people now. Guess what she did? She still married a Caucasian. And then this bitch had the nerve to talk. And then <laughs> had a biracial baby. You know why she had a biracial baby? The same reason that... A large portion of dark-skinned black women, why they get make sure on purpose they get pregnant by a non-black man. Be it Hispanic, it can be white or Asian, anything, as long as the baby does not come out looking like them. Because dark-skinned black girls catch hell in these black families. Now don't call me a liar, because I, then I have to show you the receipts. Black girl, dark skinned black girls catch hell from their grandmothers and their mothers. Whoever has to comb their hair, that's the person that started that black girl self hatred. Not when they went to school. They was already embedded in them before they went to school and black boys was looking at the light skinned girls and all that stuff. Yeah, they do. But also, but black women say that black people come in beautiful colors. And then we come in a vast array of colors and shades. Then when black dudes go for the lighter shade, you color strip. So that's why I say, black dudes, you keep doing you. Don't be listening to these black chicks. They just want some white man to get in their face. And, and white dudes don't fool with you unless it's in them, them porno movies, ghetto gaggers. Or it's some kind of freaky sector. And it's still your business. But don't act like we don't know what you hoes are doing. And dark-skinned girls want babies who don't look like them because of the trauma. Come on, somebody. That they were put through being dark-skinned. That's some plantation behavior that your great-grandma passed on to her daughter, your grandmother. And she passed on to your mama. Got to comb this nappy-ass hair. And then when they get the hot comb... Burn it, then you won't be your head still. They like be your head still. Dark skinned black girls caught it. Now some peanut butter girls caught it a little bit, and some light skinned you no know, caught it. But for the most part, dark skinned black girls and dark skinned black boys in these neighborhood, I mean in these black homes, caught all of the midnight oil jokes. Uh, let me see, dark jokes, uh, oil light jokes, all of the African Buddha scratcher jokes. And so that's why you see so many dark skinned girls. They just have an embedded anger in them. They can't even shake it. And 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 I'm in a quagmire here because I love a dark skinned cutie. But I know in my heart and my spirit that she ain't gonna like me because 
I'm gonna produce something that she will which, that she will does not want that she hates. That is a dark skinned child. Yes, Ellery, start at home, bro. Just keep listening. I'm gonna teach you. And so I know, and I love dark skinned chicks. But that 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 hell that they went through, she ain't, she's not gonna join with me and push out a puff of smoke. She's not gonna do that. Now, I'm not saying it's not being done, because we can go to the hood and stuff. We see black couples all the time. But I'm telling you, for the most part, if a dark-skinned girl had her choice, she don't want no baby to look like her. Janet Jackson, Tika Sumter, uh, 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 Serena Williams. And I never said every case. Just keep listening, Ellery. I'm pretty good at what I do, brother. Welcome to my live. I watched your live last night. It was pretty good on you roasting them chicks out of Atlanta. <laughs> It's pretty good, Ellery. <laughs> and, and you know what? And Ellery, why you here, brother? You need to you need to register and copyright the word wench. Cause can't nobody say wenches and use it in 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 the most correct form better than you. So I was extremely tickled. <laughs> so anyway, let me keep doing what I do. And so when I see <laughs> And so, yeah, dark-skinned girls, you know, that's why they're, they're 45 and 50 years old. Still complaining about somebody doesn't like dark-skinned girls. That's a problem. You're over 30 and still worrying about who's, who doesn't like you because you're dark-skinned? That shit started at, at, at 10, at 8. Because as one who's been in counseling for over 20 years, I've always taught my clients, it is our households that present us to the world. Whatever messages and cues and modeling that was done in our households, we take that teaching and learning. Um, we take that teaching and learning, and we take it out into the world, unless at some point we either enter therapy or we learn, learn that, you know what, those falsehoods I was taught at home, is not, they're not true. And a lot of us have to shake this stuff off. Or meet some other people or see other examples when we go out into the world. But unfortunately, some of it's so deeply ingrained that they can't help themselves. Look at these dark-skinned black girls that wear on this long-ass jet straight bone weave. It's insane. Whenever I see that, I know there's something wrong with her. When I see these dark-skinned girls with this blonde hair and all that, it's something wrong with her. She might be, I mean, just effing gorgeous. Anytime you got a dark-skinned girl... Calling herself Barbie. And we know Barbie is a blonde, bony-ass, white image. But this dark-skinned girl is calling herself Barbie. That's why Nicki Minaj, you know, even though she's a light-skinned, probably Dominican, whatever she is, calling herself Barbie with the biggest ass in hip-hop, talking about she's a Barbie. You know, that's another form of mental illness. That's just straight-up stupid shit. But when I see these dark-skinned girls, you know, and I love them, but I know they ain't gonna, they ain't gonna like no dark-skinned brother. Because they think, see, women know who they want to reproduce with. And so I'm saying, you know, if you date interracially, and, you no, know, if you date that, fine. But shut the fuck up about racism, please. I don't want to hear it from you. Don Lemonade of CNN said the, most, the, the, the worst thing we have to fear is the angry white man, or the, the, worst, the, the biggest threat to America is the angry white man, and he goes home and... It, he goes home every night and receives white penis from a white man. Y'all see how you can't pay attention to people who dating outside their race but still trying to talk about racism? Shut the fuck up. I don't want to hear it from you. I really don't. Now just move on. I don't even want to hear what you have to say about black folks either. If you're a black dude and all your girlfriends is Asians, white and Hispanic, don't tell me nothing about what black women are doing. I want to hear it from you because you made your decision. You jumped the fence. So keep your ass over there. If you're a black woman talking about black men. What's your problem, baby? You mad because one didn't pick your monk ass? I mean, your ass? Move on, Lonnie Love. You got your bottom basement Brad who barely works, Moni Love. Go on. See, this conversation is for black people. Not just physically, but mentally, black people. And I'm from Memphis, home of black folks. They talking about Atlanta and shit. I'm out of Hollywood and Spring there. You dig? Mm. So I know what the fuck I'm talking about. 
And we're going to have to do better. That's why I didn't care about that damn Meghan Markle. It's, I don't care about what's going on with them. I don't care what's going on with her. She's just so hurt. Well, Meghan Markle, you, you suck it up. Move on. And because we have, you know, and I'm not saying we can't walk and chew gum at the same time. I guess we can all pick what we think is important. I, as an individual, me personally, have chosen not to give a shit about what goes on with Meghan Markle and her white knight. Because one thing about it, ain't no chick going to talk me out of my money. Or talk me to leaving my money. That's what he decided to do, now move on. And Meghan Markle, you want to be related to those people? You decide to have a baby with those people like Serena Williams did? And shut up about some damn racism. Shut up about what they say about baby skin color. You know damn well that you gave birth to a Casper the Ghost. You ain't got to worry about no damn color in that baby. But anywho. You know, I can go on and on about that, but I'm not going to belabor it. Because the, the foolishness. My second topic is uh, comedian and actress Leslie Jones. She was on Wendy Williams. I have I, I like Wendy's. Uh, I don't watch the whole show like I used to, but I do watch the Hot Topics. And and but she hap I, I saw her with Leslie Jones, and the guy I heard was someone. Someone said what she said. What's up, DeAndre? Uh, Yolanda Coleman, how are you? Um, look. Now, Wendy Williams will ask you in a heartbeat. I she start asking about your move and your books or whatever you whatever you're pushing. But she'll ask, so how's your love life? And so, Leslie Jones, no, and I saw the interview, she said, well, you do better asking about my corns, I guess on her feet, and they're doing better than my love life, and she's on this little dating app called Hinge or something, and uh, apparently she's not, she has not been getting too many hits, or guys have not been checking for her, so... It's funny when when women don't get the men that they want. All of a sudden, they cast this wide net against the majority, if not the mass of men. So she said, "Wendy, girl, ooh, these men, ooh, they are so broken. They don't know what they want. They're so broken." And I and I was just screaming through the video. No, Leslie Jones, the people's the men's glasses aren't broken. They can see your ugly ass. How come it's always? Six to look like Leslie Jones and, as Kevin Samuels say, uh, they're average at best. They have the most complaints about men. You don't hear, you don't see attractive young women having problems with, I can't get no man. Their issue is, which phone number do, do I choose? And out of, out of the 50 men that holler at me every week, I hope I'm picking the right one. It's just like when women talk about sexism and misogyny in the music industry and, and videos. You ever hear any pretty women complain about sexism and misogyny? It's always these chicks that men aren't paying any attention to that want to take up the fight for sexism and misogyny. Those are pretty girl issues, and they don't have them. Nobody's looking at no dad, no, no being sexist to no woman they're not even paying attention to. Even on your job, who gives y'all the most hell men on your job? The less than attractive woman. Because she's mad because you winking at the cute little chick that work at the front desk. Or you see baby girl or, or, or that works in the next cubicle or the next office from you. They see all of that. They see when you walk past, you smiling at the little mama and them, but looking at her like, hey, what's, what's up, good morning. <laughs> they, they see that, they be mad. So all of a sudden, you in HR, you don't know how the hell you got that ugly bitch reported to you. That's what happens. And so Leslie Jones, she didn't take in any account that she has a mirror that cracks every time she washes her face in the morning. And Leslie Jones look more manly than, than the motherfuckers who's trying to dig their way out of slave. Uh, not, I mean, than a who's a foreman on a construction site. Just, just shut up, Leslie Jones. Voice heavier than mine. And she got a a, a a dude haircut that go way up there. She about six foot five, hair and knuckles, rough as shit, no feminine qualities anywhere. And you're wondering why, and I'm assuming a lot of white men were looking past you. 
Cause I bet you say, well, damn, Gabori Sidibe, she got somebody to propose to her, but yeah, look at that little feminine, little skinny, bottom basement white guy she got. She was just happy, cause in, in Gabby Sidibe's mind, just like in the movie Precious, when she looks in the mirror, she sees a 5'3", 110 pound white girl. And the way she talks, my boyfriend, my fiance, I'm my boyfriend. You know, she, she's not well either. What's up, Aubrey? That's what I'm saying. These people aren't well. And then they want to project their mental illness out on society or a group of people. Leslie Jones, I'm going I'm to help you out. Because, by the way, I'm not coming to you like I'm Denzel, goddammit. Even Denzel in the Equalizer or Denzel in Mobile the Blues. But, I, you know, well, you know, I never said I'm, I'm the most handsome guy out here. But, goddammit, I am one of them. So, having said that, uh, Leslie Jones, let me tell you about somebody that, that, that we saw in the media for years. And she was kind of just like you. Her name was... I'm trying to get it right. And name was, uh, which one is it? Chloe? Let me look up. Let's see. Chloe. Was it Courtney? Chloe. Chloe Kardashian. Right? Let me look. Let me make sure I, uh, let me make sure I get the right one. Chloe Kardashian. Chloe Kardashian. If, hold on. Let me make sure I got the right picks. If, if it's correct. Because Courtney is the one who doesn't date black dudes. She was, she's, she's the oldest one that's, that's dating Scott Disick, right? So Chloe is the one that looked like, when she answered the door, she would say, You rang. Like on Lurch on the Adams Family. I mean, she was totally unattractive. Unfucking attractive. Unfeminine. She had these wide-ass shoulders, long-ass arms. She had a hard-ass face. Like, wow, she almost looked like she could have been the first Kardashian trans before the daddy her stepdad bruce but you know what she did leslie jones she makes just amount of about the same amount as she made way, way more money than you leslie but leslie you've been getting paid these last five to ten years what she did uh what's what chloe kardashian did and it paid off because i saw i said well damn well all right chloe <laughs> i know you know what she did leslie and you can do it too. She spent about a hundred thousand dollars remaking herself. Now, one thing she has over you, she was always feminine, even though she wasn't the most attractive Kardashian, but she was always feminine. She was always a lady. But she put her money where her mouth is, her nose is, her breast is, her thighs, her booty. Her, her eyebrows, she put her money where all this is, and she looks cute, I'd say it, like she does. Leslie Jones, you can do the same thing. Cut the bullshit. Spend a hundred thousand dollars getting yourself together. Get you, you know, smooth your legs out, get you some axe or some nice you know cantaloupes up here and and uh no re you can re I don't mind you can redo all this if you want to. You know, and I'm not one to say, don't care, you have to compete to y'all. I'm just saying, because I want you to be happy. And you're 50 years old now. You know, you kind of start, you got, you reached the big time kind of late. I think you're like 45 or 46 when you got on Saturday Night Live or something like that. Because you've been on Comic View for decades. I remember seeing you in Comic View in the 90s, early 90s. Yeah, I remember you like, get your little routine when you like, somebody's chasing you. I remember that. Yes, yes, Charmaine. She softened her look. And that's what I want to say to you, Leslie Jones. And get the new veneers. You can do it. But you're going to have to disappear from us for about a year. Yeah, about a year. And get each thing done. Get your new breasts. Get your stomach in. Get Probably get you. Don't buy the hips real big. But you no, know, soften yourself. I guarantee you. You'll be getting the attention that you want. you probably get the white man that you want. It may be some brothers. Cause one thing about black men, their standards aren't really high when it comes to screwing chicks. Anytime, uh, anytime, she said she was born in 67, so 67, 68, 69, so she's like 54? Damn. Because I'm 52. 
So she's 54? Yeah, she can get it done. She has plenty of money. Leslie, this is Rico from North Memphis. Rico, you know, Rico the opinionist. Look, um, it can happen. You have the money to change your life around. I just told you. Or maybe you can call Courtney and ask her, Girl, what exactly no, Child, what exactly did you do? You know, ask her. I'm sure she'll tell you. Because she does look pretty. Uh, even K. Michelle. There was nothing wrong with K. Michelle's face. I always thought she was an attractive woman. But I saw her in a recent Instagram, the one where she was flapping and her booty's flapping. You know, <laughs> her booty malfunctioned. I saw that. Welcome, Kevin Monk. Her booty's flapping. No, and I looked at her. I said, well, damn. She she almost made herself to look like a Leah. She looks cute. And but K. Michelle was attractive anyway. But I wish that she would spend at least five hundred thousand dollars up here. Cause that's what's wrong with K. Michelle. Her mind is fucked up. She and she's out of Memphis too, out of White Haven. You know, we, we still got the claimer, but she is a completely ignorant chick. You know, but she has a very nice yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Charmaine said, yeah, I know, I saw the, her, Charmaine said, that was XX skin. I saw her, I saw her follow up, and I, I get it, and, uh, cause, and then, but, you know, she got all those booty shots and all that, yeah, and, uh, hopefully she'll get that fixed, but she, but she has the most impressive bosom, I like, well, damn, K. Michelle, and her face cute, and she got a little, little hair going down, I almost trying to make herself look like a Leah, or something, but she looked, she looked pretty. I had to give it to her. She was cute before then, but she looks pretty now. And her breasts, because I'm not wanting for bald stuff, but when it's done right, her breasts look very, no, hmm, hmm. You know, that's, a, that's like the Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland bought her little something, but they were perfect. They're perfect for Kelly Rowland. Nice. Speaking of a chocolate cutie pie, hey, Kelly Rowland. But, you know, uh, so I'm saying, stuff can be done. So, Leslie, stop blaming the world for something. You got enough money, but you can fix. See, I can't change being five foot five, but I can work on other stuff. I can change my wardrobe, you know, make sure I get you know, keep this thing or here, and I get a haircut and all that kind of stuff. No, I don't have, I don't have $100,000 a week that y'all can, that y'all make. You can fix that, Leslie Jones. And maybe while you're off for a year, take some charm class. Go to therapy. Kevin Samuels suggests fit go go to get a gym membership, a fitness trainer, and uh, uh, seek therapy. As a, as one who's been a master's level social worker for over twenty years, I suggest the same thing for most of us who are not feeling that great. Tony, what's up? Seek therapy. Get a personal trainer. Join LA Fitness. Let's go. Let's make it happen. Change your diet. So Leslie, you don't have to uh, attack men. Yeah, I know a lot of Americans are broken, Leslie Jones. But black people in particular, we're really broken. Because we've suffered a grave trauma that no other group has ever suffered. But we're still forging on. Forging on but it's like we're, we're limping. We, we got a hump in our back and we got a limp and we're arm dragging. That's who black people are. We're barely making it, as old folks used to say. But we're still making it. So when we throw out that word broken, <laughs> trust me, uh, no, in your case, Leslie Jones, you mean you're mad because people's glasses aren't broken and we have 20-20 vision. But again, you can change that, Leslie. All right? All right, my third topic is, you know, I have not seen the movie, but I've had conversations with a few people who've seen the movie and they bring up this particular scene. It has something to do with Leslie Jones. And, and the many stereotypes as reportedly in the movie, because uh, we all have your different perspectives. Some people say it's funny. Some say it's not funny. Some people say it's too many stereotypes and this, that, 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 that. It's cool. But everyone agreed on this particular scene uh, in the movie where I guess they went back to meet Eddie Young again when it was, I guess, meeting those women and he met Leslie, I guess, at the club, whatever, and they went back and they were smoking weed or some kind of herb and Eddie, uh, Chris Hakeem, allegedly, I guess, passed out and then she got on him and started riding him. Uh, and start, <laughs> Charmaine said, it's bull. <laughs> uh, and so, and when they were describing it to me, I said, damn, that sounds like drugging and raping. If he was out of it, and then, and when he was out of it, she took advantage of him. Doesn't that sound like the stuff Dr. Cosby was 
accused of? The women voluntarily took the Benadryl or the Quaaludes, and allegedly when they went under, uh, Dr. Cosby, you no know, man, made some bodies sore around that thing. But what I'm saying, when I woke up, um, I, my body felt sore. I felt tired. I said, damn, Bill put in work when she was under, allegedly. Uh, hashtag free, free Bill Cosby. Hashtag still team Bill. Because uh, all it was foolishness. But anyway, and then you have Cardi B, who admitted on, on Instagram or one of these social media videos, yeah, I, I, I drugged and I robbed him. They want. They came in tomorrow. They want some. Let's see. Well, God, you know, I said, "Whoa, where is the DA in New York? Where is the district attorney in Atlanta? Why haven't y'all pressed charges on this woman yet?" But isn't there, here's something that's more important. And Kenya Barris, if you're out there, Craig Brewer, is you, if you're listening, and other producers and writers of the show. So why did y'all think uh, a man being drugged and raped would be funny? But y'all trying to cancel Pepe Le Pew? A goddamn cartoon from the 50s? Yeah, I remember him. He used to always, Pepe Le Pew used to always be after that cat. Like, get your hands off of me. Oh, darling, your skin is so soft. Ooh, I have to kiss you, darling. And the cat be like, go, oh, man, I ain't with all that shit. Go, pew. And then he go, bloop, 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 bloop. You know, just catch up with the cat. Yeah. They trying to fucking cancel Pepe Le Pew. I said, this country is going to hell in the handbasket. But, but somehow the rape of a, a drug, the drug and raping of a man, and let's be specific, a black man, Kenya Barris, you thought that would be funny? Y'all know Kenya Barris? He created and produced the show Blackish, Grownish, Grownish, Mixish, and Black as Fuck, or Black AF. So y'all, Kenya, you thought that was funny? Whoever wrote this, Eddie, you thought that was cool? Craig Brewer, you thought this was okay? And it's interesting, here we go, Leslie Jones. Leslie. You you allowed them, you, you volunteered to be portrayed as this ugly ass, mean, ugly, grotesque woman that you had to knock a man out in order, him, in order to sneak or steal sex from him? You bring that on yourself, Leslie. Why would you even do that? You want to be viewed as a woman and want men to see as a woman, but you purposely volunteered to be in a movie where it portrays you as an undesirable ogre. You had to get him high or some potion in order to steal or sneak sex from a man that's unconscious. You did this. And so... uh we're going to have to talk about this misandry, or anti-male or anti-black male misandry. Look that word up. It means hatred for men. And this feminist culture that allows for misandry. And these black men that's pushing this anti-man and anti-black male so they can be politically correct or appease feminists, the sensitivity of feminists and members of the LGBT. And yeah, that, I thought that was screwed. If that actually happened for those who watched the movie, y'all need to say, y'all need to email these people and say that's disgusting. Don't let this pass. Make them speak on it. It's terrible. That's what you think. Can you bear us? That what you think, Craig Brewer, white man? Two of the dullest, lamest movies, Hustle and Flow and Black Snake Moan, and you get to direct the Coming to America movie? I told y'all, I'm not the only one who reads. I'm not the only one who stays up and pays attention to detail. But sometimes a, a lot of people make me feel like I'm the only one who's paying attention. And I pay attention to a lot of stuff. I don't talk about everything, but some particular things that stand out. And this, you know, when I heard this, it's like, well, damn. And when I put it on my Facebook page, no one denied it. Some pe people were like, well, damn, you know what? Come to think about it. Or, you know what? I didn't even think of it like that. And then, you know what, bro? Well, damn, that is messed up. Because we don't value men as human beings. And we certainly don't value black men as being human beings. And we and we look at this thing, we only see victimization in one way. That is, women are only victims. That's not true. 
But that's what's being pushed. And this movie pushed that very narrative that it's okay to rape, to drug and rape a man, woman. You won't feel it. You won't get any social or any legal ramifications. And I think that sucks. I need more men to be vigilant and pay attention to what's being done to us every day from legal aspect of a child support, uh, daily, things like that, divorce, uh, domestic violence. Black men and men in general of all races, pay attention because they're trying to turn this country into a feminized existence. And some of us aren't even putting up a fight to fight for masculinity and the right for men. And I guess that's their way of trying to make up for, I guess, the male-dominated America and the world. But guess what? Why wouldn't it be male-dominated? Hell, the men build everything. The men made it possible for women to exist in comfort and all of that. So why wouldn't men, why should men run everything? Men fought all the wars. What are y'all talking about? So why the hell, women, do what you've been doing. You want to fit in, get in. But why do men have to be turned into females and feminine uh, entities in order for women to exist? But see, and I'm going to close on this. See, this feminist foolishness, it goes against, for those of you who are religious and understand, it goes against God and nature. See, there's a masculine and a feminine existence in this world. And the feminine has been assigned to the woman. Masculine the man. Also, and to my sociology experts, it's called roles, family roles and gender roles. But the feminists have worked hard to reverse or change or redefine what roles are for women, what roles are not really for women, because the role for men has never been changed. We're the hunter, gather, protector, provider. But the role of women, they, I want to cook, he can cook too. I work, he needs to work, you know, he needs to, need to help out. Wait a minute. Men are going out there fighting the good fight, fighting other men, competing with other men, trying to make it home, fighting all the elements legally, emotionally, mentally to come home to bring money to you. And all you have to do is, what, work out while he's at work? It would be behoove you to do this. Have some food cooked to make sure the children are clean. But that's even too much, so you want a man to work 10 hours and come home and cook dinner, share dinner with you, cooking dinner with you? Y'all wonder why most African American women are at the bottom who will never ever see a marriage in their life? Because you've you fall into that feminist ideology. See, feminine women have masculine husbands. Y'all ever notice that? Feminine women have masculine husbands. But someone with the masculinity of a Leslie Jones. But well, their husbands would be like those little puny white guys that, that, that's attracted to Gabore Sidibe. A real woman likes a real man. A butch woman likes a girly man. Because, you, you know, headstrong and strong and independent. You can't be around a logical man if you're that kind of female because he'll get on your nerves telling you that you're wrong all day long, which most times you are. And he's shooting that logic. So alpha men and alpha women cannot share the same space. The best they can do is share the same bedroom because they both can, man, rough it out. But when it comes to coexisting in a home space, mm -mm. masculine, feminine. They're working so hard to destroy them that they're destroying the boys. They've hired women to help destroy boys. Girly clothes, unsure of themselves. Uh, emotionally underdeveloped, overly emotional, not very logical in their thinking and how, and how they move about. Oh, yeah, it's, it's going down. But anyway, for the real women, if you care about this, y'all can eat. Y'all think y'all should email these you know, coming to America producers and Eddie Murphy and all those folks. Say, hey, why'd y'all do that? Y'all think that's cool? So y'all okay with raping of men? But as soon as you mention the word rape in the same sentence as the woman, oh, my God, he's promoting rape culture. He's just like Pepe Le Pew. Thank y'all so much. I enjoy the rest of your day. This has been Rico the Opinionist. Hit me up on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. If you're on my YouTube channel, like, share, and subscribe on this live. Please share. 
and in the uh, in, in description box and on this page. I have my Cash App and my PayPal. If you're cool with me, fool with me. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace.